Alright, if you're tuning in again, you must have watched the first part. Um, but anyhow, let's continue this. Sure. Am so, I smelly? No. Are you? <laughs> no, just kidding. Alright, so let's start with a game. We, we didn't get a chance to play a game uh, in right. the other episode. So, we're going to play, to start things off, Bean Boozled! As you know, uh, most of our audience will know this, but you don't know what this is. Is this something to eat? Yes, it's something to eat. Oh, God. Basically, there are... <laughs> you pick out... Um, you pick out the jelly bean, right? Of right. the same colour. Okay. And then both of you hold it. And then at the count of three, you pop it in your mouth. One could be barf and one could be peach. So basically, there's always You've one nasty got to one. you kidding. Right. Okay. Do you know that for like Harry Potter, right? This is part of the... I mean, I think it was based off... Bertie right. Bots. Yes. Everyday Beans, right? So what about I that? I hate that. Oh, this oh. is one of the things that I hate that the thing. And, and whenever is that in I the watch- movie itself? Uh, yeah, 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 the, 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 the first one. The contrasting jelly beans. No, 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 not the contrasting, but then the one with the, the bogey flavoured one. Oh, right, right, like yeah, that. there is a bogey yeah. flavoured one. So, yeah. whenever it comes to, like, reality TV shows, where the they have any taste kind of challenge, right. I always feel like throwing up. Uh-oh. When, yeah, so. Well, you get ready to barf in the Beauty World Cup then. Uh, Are you- okay, this one I didn't manage to find two same colours, because I'm running out. Right. So, they're both different colours, so you just pick one first and I'll tell you what's what. There's a brown one and there's a black one. So, instinctively, I feel that the brown one should taste nicer. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So, I'm going to go for the black one. Okay. Okay, so now let's see what the black... Okay, I'll go with brown one first. Brown one, for me, could either be canned dog food or chocolate pudding. Alright, so that's not so bad, actually. (laughs) I think you might have it worse because yours could either be licorice licorice, or... Skunk spray, and I hear the skunk spray is pretty bad. Ready? Okay. Okay, no, actually, why don't you go? F- no, I'll go first. Okay, okay, this one's. Let's do it individually since we're not the same flavor. Okay, ready? Canned food, canned dog food, or chocolate pudding? It tastes like canned dog food, but right. I like canned dog food because <laughs> I, when I had a dog. I used to eat the Ikanova bits. Right. And it tastes exactly like that. It's actually quite nice. Okay. Now it's your turn. It's either licorice. Can I ask for water. Just in case. Water's over there, what? No more already. No more already? No more already. Okay. Do you mind having mine? Okay. This is very scary for me. Actually. You can use the other side. Okay. This is just in case it really tastes really good. Okay, really so bad. this one is either skunk spray or oh, licorice. God. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's that that seemed very bad. Was it skunk spray? Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Alright. On that note, let's continue our interview. Do you need more water? Yes, please. Okay. Oh god. Okay. Alright, we'll we'll give you more of that. It's really bad. It's really bad? It's really bad. (laughs) I'm sorry. Save this for later. I'll give you another sweet. No, it's okay. I just need water. Okay. There's there's not much left. Okay. Okay. It tastes like I just swallowed somebody's fart. That's (laughs) really spicy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You okay? Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for doing that. (laughs) Welcome to Dwayne's Spin Stop. Okay. Anyhow... Okay, uh, let's talk about more things. Okay, sure. so the next the next we're going to talk about is uh, HIV testing. Right. Um, actually, there's not much to talk about. Basically, the right thing to do is to get tested and, and you know. But, but basically... Actually, mm-hmm. sorry to cut you off. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fear uh, with regards to getting a test. True. Uh, it is is actually one of the top issues that I face um, while managing a page. Because a lot of people don't know what to uh, how to deal with the consequences. Right. right, and there's actually a community organization. It's called the Purple Alliance, um, that actually assists people um, with getting a test. Right, uh, how they assist you is not in um, getting you the test itself, but they accompany you. Right, wow. and 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 being that that presence, being that hand to hold on to while you're waiting for the test results. And right, and this and is uh, uh, the test did, that is organized by Action for AIDS or uh, any anywhere. They um, go with you okay. anywhere. Basically, they can either go with you with the anonymous testing that's conducted by action, uh, by AFA. Mm-hmm. It's every Tuesday and Thursday, 6.30 to 8pm. 
Right. It's a van, right? Or something yeah. that it goes um, around. This is the one that's at the AFA office. Then, oh, I see. Um, then the van that goes around, they yeah. have that as well. Yeah, right? and you can look on their website. Yeah. I'll, I'll, pr- I'll put a link. Uh, yeah. So that's for the anonymous one. If you right. just want to go for the normal one, you can go down to the DSE clinic at Kelantan Lane. Um, I think the opening hours are in the morning and then in the afternoon as well. You can check that online. Right. Uh, so they can accompany you for either. Right. And I never really understood. I mean, Theoretically, I understood or, or emotionally, I could get the kind of um, support that, that they provide, right? Which, which I always thought was very nice. But a couple of weeks ago, uh, so I had this reader who wrote in, right. uh, who happened to have unprotected sex, right? Okay. Um, the guy actually coerced him into it. And after it happened, uh, and he was very freaked out, and he was actually bleeding a little bit, which is actually uh, one of the danger oh, signs. wow, okay, right? because, yeah, because it goes right. right into your bloodstream, yeah. basically. So, so he was quite freaked out about it, uh, even though the guy told him that he was tested, uh, but still, with these things, you can't tell, right? You can't, I mean, yeah. and you, you need to ask exactly when you were tested, because yeah. if you were tested, like, it's a, a three-month window period, which yeah. means if he was tested, and if he got it right after that, you yeah. would still have to wait three months for him yeah. to know that he got yeah. the virus. So, yeah. So, so when that happened to him, uh, one of the things that I told him was he, he needed to go for a test and get himself on the medication that's called a, a PEP. All right? It's post something, 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 right. uh, which I can't pronounce now. Right? Uh, but basically, PEP helps to minimize um, your, your exposure to HIV virus. Right. If but, somebody if you, but if you've taken that after you've had the experience, it doesn't no. work. So, so, so there's one for pre and one for post. Oh, really? So okay. pre is PREP. PrEP, ah. uh, which is the more popular one now, right? right which is right. supposed to be preventive, right? right? Uh, but there's one that's for post. But How long thing, after though? Uh, within 72 hours. Okay. Within 72 hours of, of your sexual contact. So when, when this uh, reader wrote in, it was already about 16 hours. So I told you, the next morning, you need to go down and do it. Right. Now, but for this reader, he was a student, so he mm. couldn't exactly afford the medication. Okay. And if you, initial the, uh, if you initially Google uh, the cost of PEP, the cost can be up to two thousand two hundred. Wow. At, at private clinics. Right. Right. So, so what if you to go do? down to DSC clinic, okay, okay, if you go down and you get the doctor's prescription and everything, uh, you can get it at a subsidized rate at AFA for hundred eighty dollars. Wow. Right. And who's but, who's subsidizing it? The government. Uh, this is like AFA and they've got like donors and grants like that. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So from, from 2200 down to $180, uh, the consultation itself is about another almost $40. Right. 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 So everything adds up is about 220, 230. Right. I've thought uh, about that though. Yeah. Just, just because there's a subsidy, don't go off thinking that you can, you know, willy nilly <laughs> yeah, have, no. have sex and things yeah. like that. I mean, these, these, People are very nice to sponsor yep. it, but at the same time, it shouldn't be abused. Yeah, yeah, you should still be like responsible. But yep. this is in case things go wrong, which is what happened for this reader, right? Yes. So, uh, even two hundred twenty, two hundred thirty dollars was a bit of a stretch for him. I said, of course, like no worries. I will take care of that. You need to get yourself on the medication. So we met up the next morning. We went out to the clinic. The nurses there were very professional. There's actually a little sign that says that if you need a little bit more privacy, let us know. Wow. Yeah, where whereby they can handle all your queries and everything. In, you know, right. rather than doing the registration or at the counter because they are very mindful of the fact that people are very conscious and a little bit embarrassed to be going there to be taking you know tests and stuff like that right um Hmm. So we went there, uh, and then he 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 went to like consult the doctor, and the doctor told him that it's best to get on the medication and all. So gave him the prescription, went on to AFA, and then there was another surprise. So AFA basically told us if you are below the age of twenty five, they subsidize a further fifty percent. So from wow. hundred eighty dollars, it came down to ninety dollars. Wow, is this right. on their website by the way? Um, not sure. No, it's not stated that 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 much. Okay. I think. I mean, like. Possibly also so that if you go get to the abused. website, right? It's chock full of information. Right. Sometimes it's a little bit of an information like like overload. like overload, right? Yeah. Uh, but so like for me, I got the experience. I have gone for my own HIV test and, and 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 stuff like that. But to be there for somebody to just help hold their hand and say that you know everything will be okay, everything will be okay. Um, I feel that that that's not done enough. And mm. a lot of people they don't dare take the test because one of the questions that he did ask was what happens after. Right. right now, AFA does. Uh, once once you are diagnosed positive, right? So things really turn south. Right. And 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 you are diagnosed positive, right? You get the prescription. AFA is able to help you get your prescription and your medication and everything on a monthly basis at a subsidized rate. Right. But it can still come up to quite a bit. We are still talking about two to four hundred dollars, depending on. Again, with HIV, wow. there are different strains. Right. Right. Yes. So if you get some of the more virulent strains, it gets more expensive. Uh, in the past, again. 
And in the past, like almost three years of like managing page, I've dealt with a lot of readers who have come out and said that I've been diagnosed um, like HIV positive. I don't know what to do. The wow. youngest I ever got was fourteen years old. Wow, it was freaky. And, and these are cl- the closeted ones who yeah, I, but I, still meet people. Okay, closeted for these people doesn't mean that they won't explore their sexual urges. Right, right. right. Just that they are they they won't understand. Okay, firstly they won't come out to anybody that's that's around them. They probably won't be able to get into um. Or they won't understand or know how to get into a proper and stable relationship and and, and and stuff like that. Right. They basically won't have the normal social support, as opposed to a normal couple or right. like a heteronormative but they still couple. Meet people. I mean, they, I guess they do. The you online, there are yeah. online ways to do that yeah. like, without being at the bars and being seen and everything. Or even okay. if you go to a swimming pool and stuff like that. Right. Things do happen there, right? Right. There, there, there are cruising spots still. Apparently, some of the shopping malls, the toilets are still quite cruisy. Really, which I was very surprised to learn. Okay, so oh, um, you do learn a lot about the community that way. I, I do, mean, and all I this do. and all uh, about AIDS and everything. You is this normally s- things that you would research, or is this things because of what has okay. happened? Yeah, because of what has happened. So right. then I will go out and find information. So Aww. initially, it's changed I thought your life. It did. It did. It really changed my life. I mean. I think it made me a slightly better, like a uh, slightly better, nicer person. I mean. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, with regards to like with that fourteen-year-old reader, yep. and then there was another one who was going on sixteen. Yeah. Um, I've actually connected them with with older readers, or I call them angel readers. Right. Who actually now sponsors their monthly medication. Wow. Yeah. And 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 we still keep in touch like once in a while, and they go for their checkups and stuff like that. Uh, they tell me stuff like their viral loads are undetectable, which means that basically they are safe. Um, they can't transmit the virus to anybody else. Right. They're leading a nice, healthy life and stuff like that. Right. So now the next, the the next hurdle for them is should they come out to their parents? Right. Right. Because for them coming out to the parents is twofold. Right. Mom, dad, I'm gay. I've got HIV. Oh no! But then you don't have to. You can say I have HIV without saying I'm gay. Also, right. Uh, generally parents will want to know more okay. right like okay. how do you get it who do you get yeah. it from and, and and stuff like that and by the way just to get a little bit legal um, in Singapore mm-hmm. if you do transmit the virus to somebody you are criminally liable wow and there's no statute of limitations on that what does that mean meaning that uh, okay for, for, for some crimes right there's a statute of limitations so let's say 7 years or 9 years or 10 years right. after the crime has been committed the police can't charge you anymore right so within so you have oh, a window period of being criminally Liable. This uh, one's forever. Yeah, this is forever. Right? Okay. It, it, it can be 20 years later, somebody can come back and, and get the police to like prosecute and stuff like wow, that. Wow, is this yeah. only in Singapore though? Uh, I think Singapore is one of the first few countries to pass that law. Oh, wow. That makes, which makes you criminally liable. Which, right. yeah. Singapore is very, very harsh on the... I mean, not harsh, yeah. but they're very quick on... I mean, you know, yeah. we're, we're one of the strictest, you know, chewing gum, yep. uh, everything, yep. uh, drugs. Um, the other thing was... Yeah, see, so actually, it is actually better to to test even if you have it rather than than not As wanting to I don't I, I mean for me when you first said it I was just like surprised because for me I would go for testing because yep. because to know I would want to know rather yep. because I mean there are ways to there's there's, medicine, there's yep. lots of medicine these days and but uh, they are very costly and for a lot of people right. they can't afford it but so then would you rather let the virus take its course you know through I've, your I mean is, that's even more costly in a sense right you suffer a lot more and okay I've so also met readers fear, uh-huh. who have been diagnosed positive and doing nothing about it. Because for them, wow. it's um, like, I can't afford the medication. So that's right. it. And then they're going to just deteriorate. Yep. That's okay. And I've actually had a couple of friends who passed away like that. Wow. But then, yeah. then there's the other thing of, do you then, do you then get sexually active? Because that's probably not um, very right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have talked with some of these friends some of these readers who are still very sexually active um, I can't act on, on, on the knowledge of how I found out right because right. How, how I came to find out was through well privileged means I'm, right. I'm, I'm not a actual religious confessional box but I still yeah. respect like the right to privacy for that uh, but when I find out what they're doing I usually tell them very firmly stop what you're doing right now because firstly you are criminally uh, li- liable and I quote them that whole section and, 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 and stuff like that um but that's it. I don't go out and report them to police. Of course. But right. I am aware, and I and I am I am aware of the psychological motivation behind why because they just get so depressed because for them there's no way out, yeah. and they simply can't afford. And for them is the consequences of like coming out to family. Firstly, mom, dad, I'm gay, and secondly, I'm gay and I've got HIV. 
is just too daunting for them. Yeah. So I've even offered to be that person to sit beside them and say that when you come up to your parents, when you do let your parents know, I will be that person sitting beside you. And probably one of the first few questions the parents will ask me is, are you the bastard who gave it to me? Right, right. Uh, That's awesome. It seems to have changed you a lot. I mean, I think from what I'm hearing right now, which I mean, I, I'm a big believer of that these days, right. is that you tend to now see every side of the story. And there's always, and it's always valid, no matter how yeah. wrong it seems to yeah. you, the yes. other side there's yep. always and once you are able to step out of that and not get personally attached to your own opinions uh, I think I think that's a you yeah. know in, in, in a sense in talking about a broader perspective it makes the world uh, yeah. a better place hopefully. if people can do that hopefully yeah okay that's pretty awesome that's one of the reasons why I want to do what I do yeah. and, that's awesome and I think you made a very valid and salient point about not being attached to your own to your own opinions I mean, you can have them but don't be attached mm. to them yep. be aware correct, of what correct. your opinions are you yep. are still a person with opinions yep. but yep. yeah but being very objective and that's one of the biggest hurdles I face with administering this page because being objective enough to see like even though I know somebody is doing something wrong but understanding like the motivation behind it going like okay you do have your reasons for doing it they are not excuses but they are reasons yep so yeah yeah so anyway, but we would both, I think, uh, safely say we would encourage you yeah. to test for anyone to test yep, for definitely. AIDS if you're, if you're very active or even yep. if you're active at all. Yep. Uh, did you know this, by the way? I did the voice for the recent uh, ad. I don't know if you've seen it. It's on YouTube all the time. I'm clicking for my next video. The ad will pop up and it's like, it's always funny to hear my voice. Which ad uh, is it? It's the one where this person is voicing, uh, saying his father and his mother and his sister and he loves his sister and then... Oh, that one? <laughs> yeah. Really? And it says Okay, that that's very different from your other fast food commercial one. It's very different. It's yeah. very different. But that one's it's very low. And it's and it's like, uh, yeah, I have a loving father. Mm. A sister. Yeah. 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 So my yeah. voice is really yeah, low on that one. It's like HIV because test. So anyway, I watched so, that in the cinema. It came out in the cinema as well. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It is, it is in the cinema. Which I was a little bit... What can I say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a little bit what? No, um, it's actually one of the better ads that they put out. Right, yeah. yeah. No, it's it really was... one of the better ads. Because it really makes you think. It's a little bit uncomfortable. And when yeah. I watched it in the cinema, I did look at the reactions of, of the people around wow. me. Wow. Because that kind of advertising is not what you expect when you're going to watch a blockbuster movie and stuff yeah, like I'm that. I'm surprised they put yeah. it up in yeah. the cinema. So. And that was during the James Bond movie. Wow. Yeah. So so it got people like looking a little bit uncomfortable and but it was very in your face. Yeah. Which I feel is actually very crucial. It gets the issue out there. So that was actually a pretty good ad. And I, I like that he wasn't your stereotypically yeah. loud, yeah. coloured, yeah. shirt gay person. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, uh, well one okay, one of the most marginalized groups within the LGBT community, right, mm -hmm. is people who are living with like HIV. There's so much stigma there a huge swath of content that I've received in the last one year are people with HIV and they are struggling to... Firstly, they have to come to terms with themselves, right? with their family. Mm -hmm. And then what's next? You know, And a lot of them keep asking the same question. Will I ever find someone who will love me? Yeah. Right? Despite the fact that I'm living with HIV. And it's, and it's a question that I get online or face-to-face -face, and I don't know how to answer that because that is... And I feel yeah. like this is one of the most fundamental human needs, right? Yeah, like, that's The tricky. need to feel loved. Yeah. Um, I've 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 actually got a close friend, who's not HIV positive, but uh, is dating somebody who's HIV positive. Right. And I take my hat off to him for that because it's actually very brave. Yeah. And um, and actually these days with medication and all, the life expectancy of somebody with like HIV is not that much different from somebody without. Right. And there's so much fear because there's not enough understanding. Yeah. I feel. I mean, there should be a show out there, hopefully soon, about about couples you know, with one or two, you know, with living with HIV, I think that would help help to uh, enlighten what kind of possible lifestyles, a positive, yeah. in a positive way, that there can be with stuff like that going but on. But studios won't be happy with that. Of course not. Because yeah. it affects advertising. Sorry. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ah. In any case, so, yeah, speaking of that, let's get, I mean, so, any this sidetrack, this is, sure. I have another ad that's going on at the same time, which is right. an NEA ad about food wastage. So okay, that's I've a very one. Yeah. funny one. It's about like, it's a lighter voice and everything. So I hear these two sometimes and they pop up and I'm just like, ah, what's going on? But anyway, speaking of uh, um, um, not being liked and everything, I, so let's move on to like the, the stereotypes now that we have of gay people. Not so much about what gay people are supposed to be like, but just rather the superficiality, I would say, of things. I mean, that happens right. in any community. I mean, straight or gay. Uh, but do you think gay in particular do you feel that there is a higher uh, superficiality in terms of 
you know, because of all the images we see, right. um, uh, you know, like so about you know people people <coughs> who don't look like that may right. feel very insecure and feel unloved, and so on top of being, uh, for example, if they are closeted, I mean, top being a minority, uh, they have to deal with this other thing of like, oh, I don't f- even feel attractive enough, you right. know. Then I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, um, are there a lot of people who have <coughs> confessed or voiced yes their feelings yep. about? I mean, like body shaming, right? Yeah. Um, is is a huge issue, um, not just for the gay community, but I think for Every, females as well. Exactly. Um, straight guys somehow kind of coast by, you know. There's this latest thing now. If you have a dead bot. Oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 So for straight guys, <laughs> if you have a dead bot, you're hot, right? But what if you but, don't? Um. Right. But if you're gay and you have a dead bot, you're pretty much sidelined. One of the earliest comments I got when I finally showed huh. myself. Right. as the admin was oh my god you're so fat okay yeah which I was like okay not exactly relevant to my role but okay fine yeah like what's uh, it gonna do with anything right yeah uh, but body <laughs> shaming um, I feel okay and this is purely my personal theory right. the gay community why we are so superficial or, or why we are so obsessed about looking good is because it's a defense mechanism okay because we, we get a lot of external uh, hostility Right? Uh, right, people who choose to oh my god you're gay or oh my god you're so gay you know and, and all these kind of like cutting remarks so the the pushback to that is to look as bloody good as you can you know, to, <laughs> okay. you know and which, which comes off as I can see as, that right? the, the sass that, 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 like... that, yeah that, that whole flamboyant sassiness of like excuse me girl you know yeah. Yeah, like I may be gay but I'm looking way better than you yeah. okay so, so, so my personal theory is that it starts it started off as a defensive mechanism right um the other thing which I read somewhere was uh, why gay guys are so much into because you are actually appealing to your own sex yes. as opposed to um, straight couples for example guy and girl right, right. okay uh, there's, oh. there's there's no obvious points of, of comparison right you know like, like for a mean. girl to find a guy attractive apparently a lot of girls like guys who are huggable Right, okay, well, which I guess my kind of body actually makes me an ideal candidate, but <laughs> too bad I'm not. Right, so uh, and and guys like girls, you know, with boobs and but guys ass and, don't and like stuff. guys who are huggable, I guess. Yeah, but then when, but, okay, well these days actually oh, the oh, no, bear community they're, they're, they're actually yeah the bear community is growing, which is good, which is different. Yeah, but then again, I but then I'm again it's that still a label. I mean, yeah. I guess, but then I guess you have to have a label. I mean, you have to have a uh, preference of sorts, right? Anyway, so. I guess as I long as there are different communities that are popular, I guess that's still good. But I anyway. think people like like labels because it's easy to sort somebody. It, I mean, like one of the most popular things about like Harry Potter was, you know, there's four schools, right? Yeah. Are you a Gryffindor versus a Hufflepuff versus right? A, right. And, and, and people like or these online personality quiz, you know, like are you this person? Are you that kind of person? And stuff like that. Uh, people do like labels. Right. But when labels become negative. Yeah. Like, uh, one of the things that anger me when when I come across like grinder profiles, you know, uh, no fems, o- okay, there are the obvious ones like no Asians, but we don't get that so much here in Singapore. Right. Um, racial discrimination. Um, I personally feel that, well, okay, that isn't that much. Um, the Malay community does get sidelined quite a bit. Right. Much more the Indian community, which kind of disturbs me because right. I personally find Indian guys quite hot. Right. So I don't get that. But uh, body shaming is actually one of the bigger ones. Or uh, or even mannerism shaming, right? So, yeah. uh, no fams, no chaps, no CC, you know, all these very hateful labels. Right. Uh, but the community seems to kind of close one eye and wink at them, in a sense. Right. Um, and even, I recently discovered by, by talking to some of my readers who turned out, there are even labels within the bear community. Wow. Yeah. So, even within a community that has been sidelined, there are further labels that sideline it. Oh, wow. And, Side tracking like like a little bit. One of the things that shocked me when I first started the page was the level of biphobia. Okay. Um, there's right. a lot of um hostility towards bisexuals. Wow. Which to me was like, I don't get that, you know. Right. Because personally, I find bisexuals a little bit hot. So like right. you can play both sides of the aisle. Okay. Like, but then how would you how would you differentiate it though? There's one thing. It's one thing to have a preference. Yeah. It's another thing to shame, right? Yeah. So if someone's putting on their profile oh yep. no Asians or anything yep. would you say that's shaming or is, is that a preference how, how would you read it though it's, it's tricky right because yep. people should have a preference right okay. I mean if they just don't like Asians then they don't yep. like, well, well. again both sides 
okay, and on the page, right, I've, I've put up these topics for discussion a lot of times. When I come across articles like on Huffington Post and stuff like that, right. I will put it up there just for discussion. And you see the readers, I wouldn't say they go to war, but it's very close. You have those that would say, this is just my preference. Like, what's wrong with it? Right. Versus those that says, this is racism or this is body shaming and stuff like that. Um, my take at the end of the day is, if you've not been on the receiving end of it, you will never understand. Right. Right. If 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 you've never been told that you're fat, you're faced so many times, or or you've been blocked, you know, yeah. automatically just because you're fat, you will never feel that kind of rejection and hurt. Right. And for me, is okay. Again, if it's just for sex, right? If it's just for hookups and stuff like that, I would then tell the other person, look, just forget it, right? So that person is sizes, or that person is stupidly racist, right. right? Who don't happen to find you hot just because of your race, not even because of how you look, but just purely because of race. Right. Then that guy's a total retard anyway I'm right. sorry it's, it's okay. not, it's not pers- yeah. I mean don't take it personally yeah. it's just a- um, you know we do have to grow a thicker skin yeah. but on the other hand I feel that if some of us would just open up our minds like a little bit more um, I do tell some of my readers right look if it's on grinder, if it's just for sex why get so hung up about it yeah. Okay. But if somebody has gone out with you on a couple of dates and stuff like that and then finally comes back to you and says, you know, I think you're a wonderful person and there was actually this post that went viral, not on my page, but there was this girl that went out for a fantastic date. She had a fantastic fir- uh, first date. Right. And the guy actually wrote a long letter to her telling her that she would be a perfect life partner if she wasn't so fat. Oh that wow. Was so disgusting. That yeah, was like, that that is yeah. That is- but Rich, I mean, okay, if it's to that level, then that guy is yeah, you can call him all sorts of awful names. Right. But um But if it's just for sex is like yeah. sometimes you just can't help it lah. Yeah. Visually and we are talking about being turned on by what turns you on visually, right? Yeah. And being turned on is generally a lot about that. Yeah. But if you really think about it, how long can you be turned on by one person? After a while it mm-hmm. it still kind of fades, right? I mean after a yeah. while, even if that person is still hot, you would still naturally as a human being you you would see something new and be attracted to that. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you really have to think about what really makes you feel connected and good and loved. It's it's those things fade away, but I think a, a true meaningful relationship doesn't. So yeah. so I mean, if you can, I wouldn't even say if you can look past it. I think if you can just change your perception, yeah. you will be able to not care so much about these uh, less important things. Although it's you know, one of the jokes I have, in jokes that I have uh, in my relationship with my partner is uh, I wasn't this fat when I first got attached to him <laughs> yeah and then I did tease him so I was like so are you um, you know bear lover now that, that you know I've grown and he says that well I love you for more than your size that's great or lack yeah, of that's great yeah, yeah. so um, people do grow um, I think once you get past the physicality of it uh, like for me now right to be honest um, the things that turn me on about my partner um, his, his obvious brains uh, his Pretty witty, though sometimes I don't get it, um, <laughs> because his humor comes off a little bit odd, at, yeah, okay. stuff like that. Uh, but the stuff that makes him happy, a lot of it I realize revolves around me. Oh, yeah. So it's how can you not love a person like that? And then you meet somebody who, you know, accepts you with flaws and all. You know, fat, not fat, um, not the best looking guy in the world and stuff like that. And he and he still accepts you for that. It really makes you think, right? And I've been very lucky to experience that. I just wish that. M- so I did ask him so what is it about me that attracts me to you and he went like well firstly I do have a lot of things to talk about actually sometimes that, that's probably one of the worst things in our relationship because I won't shut up right. especially when it comes to an argument I won't shut up you know but um, I guess I stimulate him intellectually I don't know so um, yeah not all of us may be blessed with the best genes in the world right so find that one thing that makes you special yeah. or even find that few things that make you special right. and then build on that yeah. yeah and if you are blessed with the best genes in the world um, also don't get attached to it because it doesn't Can necessarily say, stay totally not politically correct right. some of my worst sex ever was with totally hot guys you get them the fuck Sorry. It's also because they're so into themselves. Yeah. No, you can. You, yeah. It's YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fucking hot bots and everything. <laughs> Go to the bed and dead fish. Yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, because they, they feel so entitled. Uh, anyhow, uh, so yeah, so the next question would be um, uh, so so you're planning more sessions now, right? And, oh, yeah. Um, these coffee sessions. These yeah. coffee sessions. Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Okay. Uh, so what happens? It actually started off with a lot of readers just wanting to meet the guy behind the page right right but obviously 
well, and and for me, I thought that it was a little bit egoistic to just have a session whereby people come and meet me. Like, what am I going to talk about? So right. so I started putting st- um like like a program in place or or like a structure. Okay. Uh, so I think it was the second the second such ses- uh such session that I realized that hey, aside from meeting me, which is all fine and dandy for the first five minutes, right. and then what caught my attention was the connections that people were making and a lot of my readers um, even as recent as the one we had on the 26th of December uh, which was Boxing Day right Right. Um, you went to KL uh, no the one in KL was on Christmas Eve oh so wow so I had one on Christmas Eve in KL and then I had one back here in Singapore on, right. the, on like Boxing Day so you organised these yourself yeah. self from here so you yeah. find a space and everything and uh, so for KL uh, just very quickly was I just went up there and I walked around the Jalan Bukit Bindang area. I found okay. a nice cafe, and then I just posted the address and said, "This is where I'll be from this time wow. to this time. Come in, yeah, find me, yeah." Okay. So, uh, for for KL, so it was I guess like the that. cafe doesn't have to know your agenda or support no, it or no, whatever. No. Yeah, but it was a very nice space because they had a second level loft. We pretty much had the whole space to ourselves. Nice. Uh, you can see the picture of the readers who who turned up. It was it was pretty cool. Uh, and okay. very nice conversation very adult conversation actually wow um, it was a lot more serious than the, than the sessions that I have back here in Singapore which I was quite surprised interesting so these readers are more or less comfortable with being because these yep. pictures are available on your website um, photo album yeah for the Singapore one not really I think because again we are, we are such a small country oh I see yeah but for the Malaysians they were like yeah we are more than happy to take a picture everyone Almost everyone. Almost everyone. Yeah. So, okay, so if you're not comfortable, you still have the yeah. option to not take Yeah, picture. yeah, definitely. I mean, right. I, I, I definitely won't insist that you take a picture of me, right? Right. Um, yeah, then for the Singapore one, where for the first time I floated the idea of taking a picture, I could see a lot of people go like, no, 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 no. You know, oh, I see. Facebook. Okay. And, yeah, Interesting. The, the Singapore Facebook community is a lot smaller. Right. We, we, we are a lot interconnected. You'd be surprised at some of the connections I found. Uh, yeah, so for, for, for these coffee sessions, then I figured that, hey, it'd be nice to actually get people talking with each other so I started, um, and with the last few sessions, I actually started playing games or mixers, right? Whereby you have to talk about, like, like a little bit for yourself. So the first few mixers that I did were kind of mess, whereby uh, it became kind of almost like group therapy kind of thing, whereby one person introduces himself to everybody. Right. Very AA style, which I felt was, it got a little bit draggy. Okay. So I started breaking people into groups. Okay. Right? And then I came up with this idea of giving name tags to everybody. So because another thing which I always get after each like coffee session was dear GC I really like that guy and uh, I think he's really cute I would like to know him and then I'll write back I'll go this like, is okay. after the session yeah this is after the session and then I'll go like okay firstly during the session you don't want to go and talk to him <laughs> fine well, of course okay. right next, I mean they're shy right, yeah. uh, next please tell me like what he looks like and then like, oh um, I can't remember what colour t-shirt he wore but he had specs so I had the idea of having name tags. So now with name tags, you can't have the excuse that you don't know his name, right? Yeah. And then with these name tags, they are color coded. So, uh, so I started playing with that. And could I show you? Let's have a look. Yes. So, and um, sh- show them as well. Yeah. This is actually you gotta put it like right. Closer. So this is the first one that I had, right? It says, okay. So based on the color, you are supposed to share these four things, and these four steps are, okay. So this was in... So the yellow is the first one. Yeah. So um, based on, on the colour that you were assigned to... Oh, I see. Where, I see. Like, like when you arrived, you would share these four sessions. But since there's only you... Um, and okay, this is where... This is easier to see. Lah. Okay. Yeah. So these people will actually be introducing for them. And these four topics that I chose are actually crucial um, life milestones. Closer. Closer. Yeah. If you can yeah. see. Yeah. Right? They are actually crucial uh, milestones. Okay. Uh, Let's read it out anyway. For, for, for a gay person, so right? Th- these milestones are first time coming, coming out, out uh, first crush love, okay. right? first gay lesbian friend, and first gay social event. Wow. There are actually three more steps that I didn't include here, right? Okay. The, 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 the very first step actually is the first time you come out to yourself. That's wow. your self realization. Yes. Right? Um, the last step, which I didn't include, right? And the last step to being totally comfortable. Uh, with yourself as a gay or lesbian person is actually coming out to your family. That's the last step. That's the last step. Okay. The sixth step, right? Because there are a total of, of like seven steps. The the penultimate step to that is actually coming out to your colleagues. So, so if you think wait, about is that it, after family? No, no. So 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 society and environment is uh, at large is even before family. Yes. Right. Which actually tells you about the levels of fear because 
every time you, <laughs> you, you, you like come out, right, there's that little bit of apprehension and a little bit of fear of, oh my God, what if I get rejected? Yeah, yeah. Right? So the first time you, you, you come out to yourself, then the second time is the first time you come out to anybody. Yeah, right? yeah. And then the first time you, and then after you come out to somebody, probably after that, you will probably have your first crush or your first love. Right? And then you probably find your first gay friend. And then after you find your, girls, uh, your first gay friend, you will probably attend your first gay event or even go down to a right. gay pub and You've stuff like that. you thought about this. This is your own... No, nope, this is well-researched. Oh, I, yeah, see. These, I see. These are the seven steps. So it, is, it kind of mirrors the seven stages of grief, but not so... <laughs> Well, not so dark. Seven uh, stages yeah. of gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. so based on that, right? I've just taken the first four. Uh, not first four, but I've but I've just taken four steps within that, because I guess coming out to your family, a lot of my readers have yet to experience that, um, and usually that is a huge question on their mind. Uh, coming out to colleagues is another thing that's huge. You know, especially right. again here in Singapore, we have no workplace discrimination laws. Right. Uh, that protects LGBT people. Uh, so yeah that that's probably a step which I think only a handful can actually relate to right um, yeah I wonder what company policies are on that are they, are they supportive or are they they just don't want to get involved or you know um, local companies generally don't have anything because local companies tend to follow our Ministry of Manpower so Ministry right. of Manpower doesn't have anything to like legislate them they don't bother okay right. but uh, so so I worked with like Google uh, right. who has a fantastic HR policy and with Google actually <clears throat> but they ask, though, though, even though they are in Singapore the branch yeah. here they still follow their yes they do they do and they even have have uh, HR policies whereby if you have been living with your with your partner you you don't even need like a marriage uh, wow don't need any marriage so um, they can live cert, w- right? where you yeah. work so uh, no but if, if you're local if, if you're Singaporean and I hope I'm not getting anybody in Google in trouble about this right, but right. Uh, if, if you're local and you can prove that you have been living with your partner for a certain period of years I think 3 years or 5 years that person is automatically <clears throat> is automatically recognised as your partner right. and they get health insurance benefits everything as health your fantastic. partner okay, if and actually this this doesn't just extend to like LGBT partners but basically anybody right? right? so even Equal like normal couples who who are like cohabiting, right? But don't believe in marriage. Yeah, that partner also gets dental, health, stuff like that, which is quite awesome. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, if that is true, then it's very, very modern yeah. thinking, very, very um, forward. Very uh, Google is actually one of the first companies in the world that is actually pushing it. Wow. And because it's Google, so the Singapore office or the APEC hub, as as, as known here, is actually uh, like pushing that out. Right. Most other companies uh, that recognize uh, same-sex couples right. would usually re- require a marriage certificate. Doesn't have to be here. well. You can't get one here. Yeah. But you can go to I think the closest in New Zealand that uh, legalized gay marriage last year. Australia, no, right? Australia, I not think certain quite. states. Okay. I think certain states, but it's not nationwide. Not nationwide, right? But New Zealand is like a federal law kind of right. thing. I have a friend who is uh, about to document his journey with all these red tape and all this. Uh, uh, who's Australian? I don't know right. about that, but but if uh, if that comes to that, then I will sure I'll share yeah. that with you. Um, okay, so was that all about the the session yeah, in so, general? So uh, so mixers. usually we, we we play like mixers, and then after that, there's a kind of a topic of the day. Okay. So based on uh, whatever topic that I choose for that particular month or day, right? Uh, we we talk about stuff like coming out or coming out in the army. Actually, that was quite a popular one. I had one of my highest turnouts for that when I announced that the topic was how to come or dealing with coming out in the army and for that wow. one it was actually quite epic <laughs> they will send you to a counsellor first of all right um, I don't know in the past <clears throat> I've heard um, okay. you go to a counsellor and then you're labelled 302 yeah. and then you will be counselled out of being yeah. gay no no does no does that no, still no, happen no um, okay I can't find the link here now because it's well the Facebook app oh. doesn't show notes but I have, but I officially got a note whereby yeah, I the documented. App show notes. That's a, that's an issue. Yeah. that's an issue, guys. I have my podcast, yeah. and it's very hard for my my subscribers to get to the notes. So yeah. it's like almost I need a Facebook, uh, yeah. a rather and rather a page yeah. to have that. Uh, um, because Facebook is actually trying to face out notes, for some reason. That's okay. Yeah. All right, I have to rethink that. Anyway, okay. so uh, for that particular session, I actually had um, uh, who chose to remain anonymous. Okay. And uh, an SAF medical officer, right? Who specifically deals with like homosexuality right so what's so, happening so, now so, so he so he said that he was more than happy to answer any questions okay so I gave him a list of like 20 questions I said these are the top thing, uh, top 20 questions that I get right. for anybody who is about to enlist in like national service and they have all these questions right so he actually answered all of them okay for me and during the session I actually read out the questions and then I read out his answers okay and it was documented on my page but then it was on no notes so okay. these days actually no uh, SAF 
uh, one of the biggest takeaways for me is that if you are if you are coming out to your medical officer in the SAF, right. um, firstly, you have the right to privacy. Okay. Uh, because a lot of readers ask, will my parents be notified? Right. You can actually state, I don't want my parents to be notified. In the past, it wasn't like that. In the past, apparently it was a little bit... F- they loose. call your parents in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they do. But, and then uh, they try to fix you. Yeah. But uh, now, no, you have the right to privacy. Right. So okay. you can state emphatically, I don't want my parents to be notified. Right. And SAF will have to respect that. Okay. Um, secondly, they don't counsel you to be straight anymore. There's okay. no conversion therapy going on. Uh, glad but basically, uh, I'm glad that's changed. Yeah. <laughs> but well, because in terms of conversion therapy, uh, we follow the American Medical Association, the AMA. Oh, right, right. Right. Which states that conversion therapy is bad. Right. And it, it is actually uh, one of the things that contravene human right laws. Right. So our Singapore Medical Council or something like that actually respects that. Right. And goes like, yeah, yeah. So that has filtered down. Okay. Which is quite awesome. Right. Um, so conversion therapy, no. Uh, but basically now these days, when uh, they do want to get to the crux of whether there's anything about your sexual orientation that may impede you with serving. Right. So for example... It shouldn't be, right? By and large, No. I right. mean the. I mean, you, I mean, I mean if you if you shower with the guys and if you sleep, I mean some of them if they know, will be uneasy. But then the thing is, you don't actually tell these the days. Rest of open you. showers, I don't think it's kind of norm anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you, you, oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, so that's so all changed. Uh, it's, right. It's quite different now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hold that thought. Yeah. Whatever you're gonna say next. Hold that. Uh, I wanted to add also that um, in the past you would have to do a mandatory six month. Every six month you'd have to go for a test. Uh, HIV test. HIV or? test. Wow. Okay. For declaring that you are three hundred two. Okay. And uh, what what happens is what what happens is that when you go to the, uh, the clinic, sometimes it happens where they go just go three hundred two test, and everybody there who's talking or sick, uh, would hear it. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. Oh my god. I'm not kidding you. That's okay. what you said. So I don't know about that. You, do no, you know? no no no. Okay now every uh every personnel that that is enlisted for national service right needs to go through a HIV test anyway. Okay, everybody so it's fair. It. Okay, yeah. I'm glad a lot yeah. of things have changed yeah. from what so, I remember. Yeah. So it. everybody does it. Uh, you do one pre-enlistment. I think you do one kind of mid-enlistment and then one when you're about to be out-processed. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, so that thought that you had. Yeah. So... um, Go back to that, if you can remember. No, I don't think I had. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... um, There was this urban legend or myth, right? That if you declare 302, you can be classified as PES E, you become oh. a clerk, or else you... Yeah, get posted Pest out. Pest E straight away. Okay, the last, yeah. but in the no, past it no. was it was Pest C at the very least. But then it was yeah. even then they were phasing nope. it out. Now you don't even get Pest C anymore. Right. Of you course. can still get Pest A or Pest B. Of course. Yeah. That that makes sense. Yeah. So sexual orientation isn't going to get you out of national service. I'm right. sorry to say. Yeah. Can't get you into MDC either, can it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, uh, it is one of the things that MDC you, is the music and drama company, by the way. Yeah. Uh, if you do declare for the sake of trying to get an MDC, sorry, it doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, um, that so that post, if you want to read it, um, I know notes. If you if you're unfamiliar, you would have to go on a desktop or a or a yeah. proper laptop, uh, to be able to access that. So I'm assuming it's on the GVS page. Yeah. Uh, on the left side, if you scroll down, yeah. there notes. should be a sec section where you yeah. can read notes. Um, and it's not organize. You can't organize it either. It's in order of uh, yeah, time, correct. right? So you'd have correct. to scroll down through. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how many, but yeah, yeah. they should. They, yeah. yeah, quite a few. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Was that all you wanted to say about that? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Coffee sessions. Uh, so wait. So in terms of the mixes. Yes. Do you want to play my mixes? Do I want to play your mixes? Uh, I could. Yes, I could. Okay. I could easily add this, edit this out if I wasn't ready to. So basically, yes, <coughs> I will play your mixes. Okay. Uh, anyhow. Uh, okay. Cool. Let's let's do this. So so there are four questions, right? Yeah. Um. Usually you only answer one of them. Okay. Okay, but since now there's only you and me. <sighs> I have to answer all of them. Yep, you okay. have to answer all of them. Okay. So, the first one is, first time coming out. First time coming out. So, we're all just assuming that I'm gay right now, right? Which... <laughs> okay. Oh, so, no, 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 yes. Um, first time coming out for me was... Um, was actually in the army. All that information that I was telling you about what I know was my own experience. I don't right. know if you know this. Uh, I never told you. Uh, no. I met you... Just before army in Beauty World, uh, right. so anyway, so first no, actually no, it wasn't the army. Actually, it was it was you, me. That's funny, really. Yes, because I wasn't. Oh well, first time coming out to whom? Like generally, yeah. Yeah, it would it would have been well. I had my first boyfriend when I was eighteen, 
uh, not many people knew about that. And then the second time was with you when right. I was in Beauty World. Right. And I was trying to hide it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and <Oops. laughs> And like I am trying to hide it now. So it's, okay. it's even come out even more. 20 years later, but anyway. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. I um, seem to be doing this a lot, right? You're, 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 you're the outer. You're, yeah. you're my outer. Um, but anyhow, no, no, it's good. It's good we get to talk about this. Um, hopefully, I'll be as famous as Tyler Oakley. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyhow, so that was the first time. Actually, I was... Um, in some ways, I had no control over it. Right. I'm uh, sorry. Oh no, don't be sorry. I, uh, I, I'm totally against that now these days. Yeah. Okay, well in the past it was very different, just like with yeah. my army story. Uh, and so that's how I came out in the theatre community. Everybody was like, So ah, uh, this Nick is who ah? Uh, what what's going on between the two of you? And uh, I it was sh- it was quite actually quite quite a lot to, to deal with because I wasn't ready. But you um, never brought this up while we were dating. Like, Nick, you just outed me to everybody. Uh, I was caught up. This is this is so personal, right? Um, I was caught up with it. I was I was I was quite enamored by the fact that um, there was such a. At the same time, there was this public display of it, so it was quite fascinating as well. Uh, although I was not comfortable with it, but I just figured I would just go with that emotion more than the the negative part of it. Right. So yeah, so that was the first time, and I came out and how I felt about it. Uh. This feels like a second coming out, although probably half the world already knows because that basically just outed me to the theatre community. Yep. I mean, and that's where I work. That was my first job. Right. Uh, and basically, there was no turning back. Uh, you know, once... Theatre is very small. So once people know something, it's out there. And yep. so I've worked for the past 17 years after that. And, I, you know, it's just I, it's something I can't hide. But at the same time, I, I think it's probably not too difficult to tell. Would you feel that in the last 17 years, right. having been outed by me, sorry, <laughs> uh, that has kind of impeded you in your career in theatre? Mm, no, not actually at all. I mean, in theatre, it's, it's totally fine. Right. There's no... The only thing I was warned, though, well, well the sec- my second sort of coming out was, was my army experience, uh, which back then, of course, like what I said, they bring you to an OO, an orientation officer, and then you have a, a talk, and then he sends you to the psychiatrist at right. CMPB, who then tries to dissuade you and fix you. Um, and the OO did tell me that, you know, you realise that if you do this, we'd have to call on your parents, we'd have to put it on record, and so the government will know and you will never be employed by the government again. That was back then. But now I know the government hmm. has eased up on it. Yep. So so they do employ gay people, which is great. But back then I was facing those kinds of odds. And um, so those were the things that, were impeding me more than the outing. I mean, in the army, I chose to, but that I think being outed before I went to the army, in a sense, helped me to make that first firm stand in the army. Going, you know what? I'm gay. I mean, part of it was because I wanted to be downgraded to go to MDC, but another part of it was, you know, I was, I was, I was proud to be gay, and I and right. I wanted, and I was just like, you know, this is who I am. Yeah. Mine was slightly different. Uh, okay. When I went to the army, right. when they asked me that question, I did ask, um, what will happen if I reply yes? Right. And and you can't be an officer, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the MO did look at me and went like, are you? And I said, no, I just want to understand the consequences. Right. Then he went like, well, you will probably be downgraded and you will be assigned the thing. So I, so I said, so I won't be assigned to a combat vocation. And he went like, well, if you want to go to a combat vocation, then you shouldn't reply yes. So I said, right. okay, no. Right. Can you still be an officer now, though, if you said, if you're gay? Probably, right? Okay, they don't have hard and fast rules and they probably won't write that down anywhere. Right, but probably yeah. not still. Probably not. Okay. Yeah. Alright, what's your next question? Wow, this is the deepest I have Okay. Uh, gone first crush the... love. First crush love. Jason Scott Lee. He really? is... Um... Okay, well, I did notice. I'm going to take this down. Um, first, well, one of the first few Asians in Hollywood that made it quite big... Uh, so I had a web page at the time it was HTML uh, about him. He's yeah, uh, basically the one. actor that um, played Bruce Lee in uh, uh, the Bruce Lee story. Uh, not to be confused with Brandon. Brandon is his son. Um, he was in The Crow. So Jason was also in The Jungle Book, Disney's first live action uh, adaptation of it. There's going to be a new adaptation of it coming out uh, this year of The Jungle Book, by the way. Uh, anyway, so Jason uh, was my first crush and he was in other a lot of other movies as well. Um, and I 
as an aspiring actor, I looked to him and I and I respect him a lot for pushing those boundaries in Hollywood, uh, you know, for Asian actors. Uh, and he was also at the time, I mean, still is very environmental, very into very na- like into nature a lot and everything. And, and there's something about him that was very, very fascinating and very charismatic to me. And so, um, even that experience changed my life because uh, I set up a website. I met lots of different people. I have had I have an adopted or a, this mom has adopted me, my American mom. Uh, oh. You know, when I would travel to the States, sometimes I stay with her. So I made friends with, just like you, from having an online platform, I've made friends with different people because of Jason. Uh, and I'm very thankful for that. And I actually did get to meet him uh, when he came to Singapore. I have two reporter friends who interviewed him. Uh, Denise Tan, my first guest ever, and Angel. Um, both called me separately to say um, they were going to interview uh, him. At, Denise was with, with, with Power 98. Uh, Angel was with Harper's Bazaar. And so I got to sit in both their interviews. Uh, met him he had a photo shoot at Russell Wong studio which is not far from here um, I met him it was the most amazing thing uh, but before that sorry this is a very long story before Ooh. that I actually was in Hawaii attached to Hawaii Public Radio and that's where he lives so I wrote to his mom and she said oh you know Jason is back home resting uh, but I cannot let you meet him to interview him because he's resting and so after that when I met him he was like oh you were the guy that's trying to meet me you're the guy that um, you know has a <laughs> face has a has a website set up about me so he, he signed another uh, book of mine with a very very nice personal note and turns out he married a Singaporean uh, really? wife mm-hmm. he has a he has a daughter right now and he married wow. a Singaporean girl so anyway so that's full circle my Jason that's crush cool. story that's very cool yeah I think a lot of my readers would be jealous really? Well, I skipped one day at MDC. I have never skipped a single day. I am not the sort. I'm the straight A type. No, I'm not straight A. I'm like the very to the book, you know. But I, but that for that day when he was a uh, photo shoot at um Harper's Bazaar for for Harper's Bazaar, I I, I skipped. Uh, I took an MC and I went there to meet him. I think Babes is gonna be mad. She's gonna be mad. Yeah, Babes Conde. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Next one. First gay lesbian friend. First gay lesbian, lesbian friend, friend. Yeah. not not first boyfriend. That would be my no. friend, right? Friend, friend. Oh, well, this... but well, okay. Just to qualify that, for some people, their first gay or lesbian friend turns out to be their boyfriend as well, right? I would say yeah, because he wasn't my boyfriend at the time. We were using IRC Internet Relay Chat. It was even before IRC. It was something even more primitive than that. This is how far I go back in terms of my internet history. Um, there was this thing called the Tele Cafe, oh. and oh, so okay. you know of it? Yeah, it's ancient, right? It's before yeah. IRC, right? Yeah, it was on the TV, right? Yeah, and um, Teletext. Teletext, yeah, and and so I was talking with a group of my friends. There was a channel for the school that I was in, and this guy knew me, seen me around different class, but he um, and I didn't see this. He had his username was Y A G. Which I didn't see. Why? Which is, okay. which is gay spelled backwards. I didn't see it at all. And he was very clever. He anonymously tried to get close to me. And he did because I was stupid and gullible back then. And eventually he got me to out myself to him. Because he was anonymous. And, right. and I was anonymous. and he, But he knew who I was somehow. Uh, and then after that, he confessed that he, he liked me. And that's how I got into my first real friendship with a gay person and then a relationship cool do you yeah. see him in touch with him? yep I just met him uh, about a week ago oh cool That's I right. shall not mention him but no worries. but um, he's a bit angry with me right now because I did a I gave a Star Wars spoiler on my <laughs> and it wasn't really a big spoiler it was just okay I won't say anything but he, but he was it, he's we have a you know how with exes yep. we have like a bit of a love hate teasing yeah. relationship yeah so how's that skunk spray by the way <laughs> oh, so that was payback, huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Last Sorry, one. my answers are very long. Yes. Uh, first gay social event. I want to say that five some that I. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, first gay social event. Uh. Oh my gosh! I don't know. I probably didn't have one until it would probably be in the theater circuit while I was probably having a one of those parties and then everybody just trickles away and then suddenly everybody's left uh, bapos on really? a rooftop just like eh where's everybody else oh I guess we were too loud and bapo-ish and so everybody left and so now it's right. a gay party I guess 
I can't remember exactly when. Was that before any gay bars or stuff? That yes, you definitely. Because, uh, yeah, so that was, it, it kind of happened by itself. It's not like I chose to because in the theatre environment, it's just, you know, that was my environment. So that, that first gay event was probably one of those parties. Lah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Was it before Boom Boom Boom? Uh, I don't know. My past is very mixed up. Probably before Boom Boom Room. So by the way, um, oh yeah, Nicholas, besides performing in Forbidden City and Beauty World, yeah. uh, performed I just at totally the recall. Boom Boom Room. Yeah. Uh, I remember I, I, I... You actually got me the job. I Did I? I can't remember. Yep. Okay, I did. Yeah. Okay. Nick performed as a dancer at the Boom Boom Room. Uh, the only cabaret and not, there's Still, none left in Singapore. Yeah. Still so is the sad. only one, right? Yeah. Sad. Very sad. I miss those days. Yeah. So Dwayne was singing there. And uh, Dwayne actually called me up one day. And I remember it was during the last week of my NS where I was back in camp. Uh-huh. And you called me. And then you said, Hey, Nick, have you heard of the Boom Boom Room? <laughs> and then you actually got me an interview slash audition right. with our choreographer, Romel. Romel. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I went down and then I got... Nice. Yeah. So that totally changed my life, by the way. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, in mostly for way? the better. Uh, <laughs> mostly for the better. But you know, I was kind of an angry, rebellious brat jerk I think we all were I mean all of us in yeah. back in the day were like yeah, yeah. but yeah. but I yeah. still miss those days I, and, and, and I miss those girls Oh, yeah. I still see some of them perform sometimes here and there the, I think the bars I've been meaning to go down to Hard Rock for a very long time the last time I went oh, they don't do like, it on Mondays anymore no Kuma it's not doesn't do it on Mondays no yeah I try, try bringing my friend uh, I'm not sure he, yeah. he does the occasional show with Dream Academy okay um, but that's all I know okay yeah because I'm on Facebook with some of them I thought mm-hmm. I saw them post like Monday night performances. Well, I checked with uh, Nina right, uh, right, recently Nina. Yeah. and she said no. I wanted to okay. bring my friend there. Uh, we only have about right. uh, f- six more minutes. Okay. Another cool. hour has passed. Wow. Crazy, right? Right. So is there anything else you would like to add? I'm, um, I'm sure there might be a second season or something where we invite you back. But for now, sure. um, is there anything else? Nope. If not, um, we will yep. end with a game. Okay. Uh, another game another game this is a truth or lie game see if you're okay. still the bad rebellious boy that, no no not that you lie or anything but uh, so this this game is what I'm going to do is I'm going to look away you're going to pick something you in my room right, there are things that you can reach right? right and you're going to describe it show it to the audience first right and then you can lie or tell the truth when when I'm looking at you you can describe it to me and I'm supposed to decide or not whether you lie or whether you tell the truth. Can you give me an example? For example, if you... If I ask you to look away, okay. and I go, okay, I'm showing this, mm-hmm. and then you turn back and I go, okay, what I just showed my audience was something that was uh, make, made by Apple. Right. Uh, that uh, basically is an iPad. Right. So basically, well, I would describe something that would be an iPad. And then I, I will go, so am I lying or am I not? Okay. And basically, what I showed them was this. So I would be lying. So you'd have to tell from my expression when I'm lying. Oh, okay. Get right. it? Okay, okay, cool. So I'm going to look away. Or right, I'm going to bury my face like that in this. And I'm, I won't look. Try not to make any sounds because sometimes I can hear exactly what's happening. Caleb tried to show uh, an umbrella and I heard, <laughs> I heard chafing. Really? Yeah. And you reaching over like that? Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know why you're reaching over. Have you showed the audience? No, I've not. I'm actually looking for something. You're still looking for something. Okay. I'm still looking for something. Yes, I love <laughs> this. I don't know. You can open drawers if you want to, I guess. Huh. You um, probably need to edit this out. Wait, wait. Oh, uh, wait, wait, no, I'm looking. Wait, uh, uh, if you want to open that bottom drawer, you can. I just saw you take a book, so you have to try again. Hmm. Okay. You can pretend it's from that drawer or not, or you know, because I kind of know what's in that drawer. All right. Have you showed the audience? Or are they just looking at me? No. Hiding behind okay. Me? You showed the audience? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you put it back in the drawer, or I don't know yeah. if you pretend it, or what. Okay. Okay. Okay, describe it to me. Um, okay, so um, it's a thing, uh, female. Um, has long hair um, sings this irritating song um, Celine Dion? No, no, no she has short hair <laughs> <laughs> sorry Celine uh, <laughs> yeah uh, she's not entirely human 
Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, I think I know. She, you're talking about. Well, you're telling the truth because you're describing it so well. Really? You're showing about you. You. Well, I'm not supposed to guess what it is. I'm just supposed yeah. to say whether you're telling oh, the okay, truth okay. or not. Oh, okay, okay, right. So you can even go on. She's. You're talking about yeah, the alphabet doll, right? No. What's that? The Green Witch of the West. No. She's. A, oh, so you. There was an alphabet. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. No. I was trying to describe Ariel, the little mermaid. Okay, yeah. so you showed Ariel. Do I have an Ariel in that drawer? I don't think so. Do I know my drawer well enough? That's that's the question now, right? Is there an Ariel in that drawer? Oh, maybe it's not there anymore. Uh, describe again. <laughs> uh, yeah, she has a tail. Well, she has a fish tail because I is it that long standy one? Yeah. <laughs> but did you show it to the audience? That's the question. You asked me to show it to the audience, what? Yeah, no, but that is if. Are you lying about the fact that you showed that and not something else? Mm. Okay, now I'm confused. Okay, so la, then you're telling you the truth, la. Then you're telling the truth. Ha <laughs> ha! I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you play freaking innocent. <laughs> I showed this. Where is the aerial thing? I have no idea, but I know I saw aerial somewhere. Ah. <sighs> Why do I always get tricked? <laughs> you nice always job. lose. No, this is the first time I lost actually. Really? I think, yeah. Yes. The aerial one is... I think you're talking about... Oh, it's still here. I thought this was given oh, to yeah, me. Oh yeah, that's where I saw it. This was yeah. given to me by, by the way, Amy Cheng, who uh, was doing Forbidden City and then she's just like, I thought you, I would like you to have this. So I was oh, like, so nice. oh, okay, thank you. So yeah, anyway. So Despicable Me. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, I have lost... And with that, we end another episode and the season of uh, Dwayne Spin Stop. It'll be back again sometime, uh, I think, middle of the year. So um, thank you so much, Nick, no for problem. this Thanks for having amazing, um, yeah, amazing, no? really amazing experience. Thanks for sharing. No, thank you for sharing. All right. All right. And as with all episodes, say goodbye and click us off. <laughs>